Hello everyone, Neon Jigglypuff here. Have you guys ever wondered why Mario games seem to be so weird? It's almost as if they don't have a proper lore or timeline. Like in one game, Mario and Bowser are battling to the death, but then in another game, they're kart racing together or playing tennis. And the same holds true for Wario games as well. I mean, in one game, he's a millionaire treasure hunter who has his own palace, and then in the next game, he lives in a garage coming up with schemes to pay for his next meal. And I think I have an answer to that. What if someone or something did something or did not do something that caused a rip in time and space and caused a split timeline? Now you might be thinking, whoa, it's just a Mario game, relax, they don't have any lore, but I think they do. I think something's hiding beneath the surface, because something's very, very fishy around here, and I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. And I think I know what caused this rip in time and space, and caused a split timeline. This split timeline was caused by the single most important character in the entire Mario universe. It is none other than Wario himself. Let me explain. Now, the first time we ever see Wario in a game ever is the game called Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, where Mario has his own palace and his own island built by Princess Peach. So, everything is going good for Mario at this point, but as soon as he gets the key to his palace, it's instantly stolen by a mysterious, sneaky gentleman named Wario. Now, why does Wario do this? We don't know. All we know is that Wario hates Mario, and vice versa. But not long after Wario stole Mario's castle, Mario storms his castle and takes it back and soundly defeats Wario. But the thing is, Wario doesn't die or fall in lava or anything like that. What happens is, he shrinks like when Mario gets hit by a Goomba, starts crying, throws a shoe at Mario's face, and runs away. Probably because he's embarrassed or ashamed of himself. I mean, I'd be embarrassed too if I were a strong, huge macho man being beaten up by a smaller version of myself. That would be pretty embarrassing. So it's this very moment where Wario begins to hate Mario and starts to envy him because Mario bested him at the one thing he had going for himself. He stole a great treasure, but it was stolen back from him. So now that we know that, let's fast forward a few years, all the way to Mario Kart and Mario Party. Wario returns once again to try and beat Mario at partying or kart racing or even golf. But again, since he's Mario, he always has him beat. Wario wants to be the superstar. Oh, but too bad, Mario is. Wario wants to be the greatest kart racer. Oh, but Mario's already the best kart racer. Wario wants to be a golfer, but oh, look who shows up. Little Red Plumber Mario, always beating Wario at everything. Despite being so strong and macho and tough, Mario still has something that Wario doesn't. What is it? Well, Mario has Luigi. Mario has a brother. If Mario can't win, Luigi can. Mario always has a best friend to help him out, but Wario doesn't. Well, he didn't until one faithful day. Now, Mario Tennis on the Nintendo 64 was the very first game that Waluigi ever appeared in, and it is also the same game where Wario and Waluigi had officially met for the first time. And you can tell that these two clicked instantly since they have a common goal, they look very similar, and they even started calling each other brothers even though they aren't brothers at all. They're not even blood related. As quoted right here, they're just two evil guys who found each other one day. Now ever since Wario met Waluigi, he got his confidence back. He stormed the tennis tournament with Waluigi by his side and officially challenged Mario and Luigi to a doubles match because Wario finally had his number two. He finally had a partner, a brother, someone to fall back onto if he loses. He has Waluigi, his own brother just like Luigi is to Mario. And Wario and Waluigi even succeed to beat the Mario Brothers sometimes. Not all the time, but they still beat them every now and then. And Wario seems to be happy since he brings Waluigi to all the parties and tennis matches and kart racing as well. And I think because he met Waluigi, he got his confidence back to become a treasure hunter once again. And this is where the Wario Land game starts. Wario has his confidence back because of Waluigi and starts to treasure hunt again. 
He's on his own adventures, just like Mario is. But he's not stealing treasure, he's finding treasure. And because of all his treasure, he's rich. And come Wario World, he finally has his own palace made of solid gold, with solid gold statues of all of his friends? Well, actually, they're just solid gold statues of him, not Waluigi. But that's besides the point. Now, you might be thinking, why are you telling us all of this? Wario knows Waluigi and got his confidence back, so what? Here's why I'm explaining all this. Because despite Wario becoming a millionaire and owning his own palace now, come to the WarioWare games, and he's living in a shack where he's too poor to even afford a pizza. And he's constantly coming up with new schemes to con money out of people to pay for his next meal. Now, why would a millionaire need to do that if he's already a millionaire? Don't you think he could buy a solid gold pizza? Well, here's the thing. I think that Wario Land Wario and Wario Where Wario are two separate people. Now, going back a few minutes ago when I mentioned that Waluigi was the reason why Wario got his confidence back and became a treasure hunter and a real rival to Mario and Luigi. Now, think about this for a second. What would have happened if Wario and Waluigi never met? What if Wario crashed his tennis tournament alone, but he was kicked out because he had no doubles partner? What would he have done then? Simply given up hope? He'll never beat Mario. He gave up and went home. And with Waluigi's absence, Wario never got his confidence boost and never became a treasure hunter. So maybe he packed his stuff and moved out of the Mushroom Kingdom for good. What if he moved somewhere far away where no one could ever find him? A place like Diamond City. He changed his identity. Sure, he still goes by Wario, but he doesn't wear the same clothes anymore. He wears a biker's uniform. It's over at Diamond City where Wario seems to have changed his wardrobe, owns a motorcycle, and has a job of making video games to con people out of their money so he could pay for his next meal? But on the bright side, he does have a lot of friends, right? So you'd think that Wario would be happy here. But here's the thing. In Wario Wear Gold, he constantly calls all of his quote-unquote friends chumps and cheapskates. Everyone there loves Wario, but Wario doesn't like them back because they don't seem to be as sneaky and cheaty as he is. He wants Waluigi, but he never met Waluigi and now he never will because Wario lives in Diamond City and Waluigi probably still lives somewhere in the Mushroom Kingdom. So without Waluigi, Wario is just a con man. Here's the thing, without Wario, who's Waluigi? So it's at this point where the theory might become a little too confusing, so I'll leave some notes on screen. Timeline A is where Wario and Waluigi meet, and they become tennis partners. And then timeline B is where Wario and Waluigi don't meet, and Wario moves to Diamond City and becomes a con man. Now what if in timeline A, where Wario and Waluigi do meet, thus causing all these new sports attractions and parties and kart racing tournaments, the Mushroom Kingdom and the Koopa Kingdom go to peace because they're constantly inviting Bowser and his minions over for parties and go-kart races and tennis matches and golfing and everything like that. In Timeline A, all the Mario characters, evil, good, or neutral, are all friends. Bowser, Mario, Donkey Kong, they're all friends with each other, and everything's at peace. Peach never gets kidnapped, no one gets hurt, all they do is party all day and have a good time. And sometimes, Wario goes treasure hunting so he can make a quick buck. Now in Timeline B, where Wario and Waluigi never met, Wario moves out of the Mushroom Kingdom and Waluigi never becomes a person. He's just a nobody who lives somewhere in the Mushroom Kingdom, but he's just a nobody. No one knows who he is. And the tennis matches and go-kart races and parties take a halt. The Mushroom Kingdom never goes to peace, Bowser keeps on kidnapping Peach, Luigi's being haunted by ghosts in a mansion, yada yada yada. And since Wario and Waluigi never crashed that one tennis tournament, the tennis tournaments, the go-kart races, and the Mario parties stopped happening because there was just no click. And because all the parties stopped, Bowser became evil again. Bowser and his troops started kidnapping Peach more and more and more, and starting more trouble in the Mushroom Kingdom, in the world, in the galaxy, maybe in a different island? A dolphin-shaped island, perhaps? If you're getting confused, let me clear it up. I believe that the WarioWare series and the mainline Mario titles, like Super Mario Odyssey or Sunshine, take place in Timeline B, where Wario never met Waluigi. 
and all the Mario Sports parties and kart games take place in the same timeline as the Wario Land slash Wario World games, the timeline where Wario and Waluigi did meet. In Timeline A, the whole Mushroom Kingdom is at peace and Bowser is no longer evil. He is at peace with Princess Peach and everyone is friends with each other. But in Timeline B, Bowser's constantly kidnapping Peach, the Mushroom Kingdom's at war, and, well, the galaxy's at risk too because Bowser caused an entire black hole. And if you want more proof of this, I got you. Because haven't you ever wondered why characters like Yoshi or Donkey Kong or Wario and Waluigi or Daisy never appear in mainline Mario games? Well, that's because all the kart racing tournaments and the tennis tournaments and parties were cancelled, therefore Mario never had a reason to call all these people over. Also, if Wario and Waluigi had never met, no one would even know who Waluigi is. So why would Waluigi appear in a game like Mario Odyssey if Mario Odyssey takes place in a timeline where Wario and Waluigi never met? Therefore, Waluigi is just a nobody who lurks in the shadows, never to be seen by anyone because he never got his confidence boost from Wario. Why would Mario ever invite DK to the Mushroom Kingdom after they were previously enemies? Because think about it, it was Mario Party that brought these guys together again. But if that never happened, why would they still be friends? They would clearly still be enemies. So Timeline B may be where all the mainline Mario games take place, but realistically, it's the saddest timeline. Wario lost all confidence and moved out of the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario and Bowser are constantly at an unending war. Donkey Kong and Mario never made up. Princess Daisy was probably never saved from Tatonga. And the saddest thing of all, Waluigi was never found by anyone. He's probably living alone in a basement somewhere, or even worse, not living at all. Because think about it, without Wario, Waluigi doesn't really have any friend. And if Waluigi had never met Wario in the first place, he wouldn't have anyone or anything. So maybe because he's so lonely, perhaps he cut his own game short because there was no one there to fall back on. He didn't have a brother to look up to, and Wario doesn't have that either. The only thing Wario has going for him in Universe B is the little bit of cash that he gets from conning people. And this may be a sad end, but it might be true. So there you have it. In Timeline A, the Mushroom Kingdom's at peace, and all these characters are best friends and constantly playing and having parties. But in Timeline B, Wario and Waluigi are nowhere to be seen. DK and Mario never patch things up, and Mario and Bowser are constantly at war, and Mario's constantly having to rescue Princess Peach. And there you have it! That is my theory on the Mario and Wario split timeline. You know, as of recording this, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It took a lot of time to actually plan this out now because this is the first time I'm actually using a script or like a pseudo script. I wrote down the points pretty much, except for this outro. But it was a lot of fun to do. It took a lot of thinking and a lot of, you know, research to actually make all of this make sense without, you know, really forcing something to seem like it makes sense but really doesn't. You know what I mean. But uh, it was a lot of fun to make and I really hope you guys liked it. And I have another theory on the way too. It's not going to be based on Wario again, obviously, but it's another theory based on video games. And uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it because I am too. Thank you all for staying here to the very end, and, um, yeah, if you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe and, well, favorite for more. Also, uh, again, you can always leave comments if you feel like something was over-explained or under-explained or something was missing, feel free to tell me. Or if you have your own theory on this, or your own take on this theory, I'm always open to looking at other opinions and reading new takes on old theories and stuff like that, so if you have your own theory, by all means, share it in the comments, but I won't steal, I promise. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.